Order. Order. I now call Secretary Robert Jenrick to make a statement. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And with permission, I wish to make a statement about Liverpool City Council. Merseyside Police have been carrying out an investigation involving a significant link to, to Liverpool City Council. Last year, this led to arrests on suspicion of fraud, bribery, corruption, misconduct in public office and witness intimidation. On the 17th of December, I informed the House that, additionally, persuasive evidence had been presented to me regarding the Council's planning, highways, regeneration, property management functions and associated audit and governance arrangements. In light of that evidence, I commissioned Max Caller to conduct a best value inspection of the Council. I want to thank Max and his assistant inspectors, Vivian Geary and Mervyn Greer, for their thorough and evidence-based review. I have today placed a copy of their report in the Library of the House. It paints a deeply concerning picture of mismanagement, the breakdown of scrutiny and accountability, a dysfunctional culture putting the spending of public funds at risk and undermining the city's economic development. The report identifies multiple apparent failures by Liverpool City Council in complying with its best value duty. This includes a failure of proper and due process across planning and regeneration, including worrying lack of record keeping. Indeed, documentation had sometimes been created retrospectively, discarded in skips, or even destroyed. A lack of scrutiny and oversight across highways, including dysfunctional management practices, no coherent business plan, and the awarding of dubious contracts. A failure of proper process relating to property management, including compliance with the Council's own standing orders, leading to a continued failure to correctly value land and assets, meaning taxpayers frequently lost out. When selling land, the report states that Liverpool City Council's best interests were not on the agenda. Poor governance arrangements for council operated companies, an overall environment of intimidation described as one in which the only way to survive was to do what was requested without asking too many questions or applying normal professional standards. The review finds that there was a fundamental failure by members to understand and appreciate the basic standards governing those in public service and with no regular ethics or standards committee and no means of monitoring complaints effectively, there was no established way to hold those falling below those acceptable standards to account. As a whole, the report is unequivocal that Liverpool City Council has failed in numerous respects to comply with its best value duty. It concludes that the Council consistently failed to meet its statutory and managerial responsibilities and that the pervasive culture appeared to be rule avoidance. It further concludes that changes need to be radical, delivered at pace, and there was no confidence that the Council itself would be able to implement these to any sensible timescale. There may also be further issues of which we are not yet aware and the report is careful not to speak to matters that might compromise the ongoing police investigation. I want to underline the report is not a verdict on all the staff working at Liverpool City Council. In fact, the report commends the hard work and dedication of many. The report is also clear that the current Chief Executive, Tony Reeves, and statutory officers have taken positive remedial steps and I wish to thank Tony for his dedication and service. Neither does it comment on the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority, on Mayor Steve Rotherham or other councils in Merseyside. Despite the good work undertaken by Mr Reeves, there is a clear picture that there has been a serious breakdown of governance at the Council. If unchecked, 
It will allow improper conduct to persist, further undermining public confidence, putting public services at risk and damaging the city's ability to attract investment from reputable developers and investors for regeneration and to take full advantage of new economic opportunities, such as the recent successful application for Freeport status. Expressed in formal terms, I am satisfied that the Council is failing to comply with its best value duty. Therefore, I need to consider exercising my powers of intervention to secure compliance with the duty. To that end, in line with the procedures laid down in the Local Government Act 1999, I am writing today to the Council asking them to make representations, both on the Inspector's report and on a proposed intervention package. This package is centred on putting in place commissioners who I will appoint to exercise certain and limited functions of the Council as required for a minimum of three years. I am also proposing that the Council will, under the oversight of the commissioners, prepare and implement an improvement plan. This would require the following provisions within six months to approve a suitable officer structure, providing sufficient resources to deliver the Council's functions in an effective way, including the improvement plan and its monitoring and reporting, within 12 months to review and change the Council's constitution, within 24 months to conduct a review of the roles and case for continuing with each subsidiary company of Liverpool City Council to create a detailed structure and strategy for the highways function, to establish a plan to deliver an effective file management system, to implement a programme of cultural change so both members and officers understand their roles and the Council's activities are regulated, governed and breaches are rectified swiftly, to require the consent of commissioners before either member or officer level agree heads of terms for any property transaction and subsequent consent before any legally binding commitment is entered into. I also propose to direct that prior agreement of commissioners must be attained to any dismissal or suspension of statutory officers or the Assistant Director of Governance, Audit and Assurance or equivalent. Furthermore, any appointments to positions designated as a statutory officer or the Head of Internal Audit must be conducted under the direction of and to the satisfaction of the Commissioners. I hope and expect Liverpool City Council to take the lead in this path to improvement. However, given the gravity of the inspection findings, I must consider what would happen if the Council fails to deliver the necessary changes at the necessary speed. I am consequently proposing to direct the transfer of all executive functions associated with regeneration, highways and property management at the Authority to the Commissioners. These are for use should the Council not satisfy the Commissioners in their improvement processes. As I say, I hope it won't be necessary for the Commissioners to use these powers, but they must, in my view, be empowered to do so to deliver the reforms that are required. The Commissioners will report to me at six monthly intervals on progress being made. Mr Deputy Speaker, the report also considers the impact of the Council's cycle of elections, where every year is an election year, concluding this system reduces scrutiny and inhibits long-term focus. It recommends that the Council should move to all-out elections and for the Council's size to be reconsidered. Accordingly, I am also proposing to use my powers under the Local Government Act 2000 to provide for Liverpool City Council to hold whole council elections for the first time from 2023. This will be in addition to proposals for a reduced number of councillors elected on single-member wards, which the report also recommends. I believe it would be preferable to move to a single-member ward system at the earliest available opportunity. I am now seeking representations from the Council on the report and the decisions I am proposing to take by the 24th of May. 
The forthcoming elections will proceed as planned, and Liverpool City Mayor will be elected on the 6th of May, and the Cabinet will then have time to provide their views. If I decide to intervene along the lines I've set out today, I will then make the necessary statutory directions under the 1999 Act and appoint the Commissioners, and I'll update the House on any conclusions in due course. Mr Deputy Speaker, this is a rare occasion when central intervention is required. In addition to the measures I propose today, the Government will work closely with the political, the business and the cultural leadership of the City and with the wider region, including with Steve Rotherham, the Mayor of the Liverpool City Region. We will do all we can to support the City as it recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic and to give confidence to those who want to invest in the City to contract with the Council and to do business in Liverpool. As the son and grandson of Liverpudlians, I know Liverpool and I appreciate the sense of humour, the loyalty and the warmth of its residents. I also understand the City's independent spirit and so I'm clear that we are embarking on a partnership to mend a politics that for too long has been rooted in a pervasive and rotten culture. I'm hopeful that this is the start of a new chapter for Liverpool City Council, because in all of this, it is the residents of Liverpool who are being let down, whose regeneration is being undermined, whose taxpayers' money is being wasted, and whose city is being besmirched rather than cited with municipal pride. Mr Deputy Speaker, despite the rare cases, like Liverpool City Council, as a whole, councils in this country have a good record of transparency, of probity, of scrutiny and accountability. It is a reputation worth protecting. I will take whatever steps are necessary to uphold the good name of local government and to weed out practices that do it down. I commend this statement to the House. Steve Reid. Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm grateful to the Secretary of State for advanced sight of his statement and the report, uh, and indeed for his openness with me throughout the process. This report raises grave and serious concerns about decision-making in key functions of Liverpool City Council. All councils are under an obligation to meet their base best value duty and to ensure value for money at all times. In these respects, Liverpool City Council has been found severely wanting. Labour, both here and our leadership at the City Council, accept this report in full. The Council will respond to the Secretary of State's letter in detail, but we support his intention to appoint Commissioners not at this stage to run the Council, as he says, but to advise and support elected representatives in strengthening the Council's systems. This is a measured and an appropriate approach. I want to reassure people in Liverpool that this does not mean government ministers are coming in to run their city directly. This is not, as some would put it, a Tory takeover. It's about the government appointing independent people of the highest professional standing to help the Council improve as quickly as possible and intervening directly only if the Council's elected leaders fail to implement their own improvement plan. Investigations are currently underway into matters raised in this report and I will not preempt them. I do, though, want to reiterate my party's absolute commitment to protecting the public interest at all times and to upstanding the highest possible standards in public life. Given the concerns raised in this report, the General Secretary of the Labour Party intends to appoint a senior figure to lead a review and reassure the people of Liverpool that the Labour Party takes these concerns seriously and will take action against anyone in our ranks who is involved in wrongdoing of any kind. Our councillors in Liverpool have already met with senior Labour councillors from other parts of the country who will support them in strengthening the City Council's defences against any risk of fraud. The overwhelming majority of councillors and frontline staff will be shocked by what they read in this report. And as the report and the Secretary of State have made clear, the severe institutional weaknesses identified here do not obscure the outstanding work 
they have all done together over many years. The Prime Minister was right to praise the Council's impressive work in getting the city through the pandemic, and I want to add my thanks to everyone who continues to play a part in that. In particular, the report praises the Council's Chief Executive, Mr Tony Reeves, and I offer my support to him and to the Acting Mayor, Councillor Wendy Simon, for the work they have already started to put things right. I'd also like to put on record my thanks to Mr Max Keller and his team for putting this very important report together. Mr Deputy Speaker, this is a moment for change, and I know that everyone who cares about the great city of Liverpool and its wonderful people will accept this report and use it to strengthen the Council for the future. Mr Deputy Speaker, can I thank uh, the Honourable Gentleman for the remarks that he's just made, for the way in which we have worked together over the recent months. Uh, he has been uh, most helpful and constructive, and I hope that can continue. Can I thank him on behalf of the Government for the remarks he's just made with respect to the Labour Party, with respect to the Labour Group on Liverpool City Council. That's extremely welcomed. The step we've made today is unusual, and it's better to do this in a cross-party way. We all share the same interests, which are the delivery of public services, ensuring that the people of Liverpool get the value for money and the council that they deserve, and ensuring that it can attract the inward investment, the regeneration and the good quality development that the city certainly needs and we want to see delivered as we come out of the pandemic. He was right, and I thank him again for highlighting the Chief Executive, Tony Reeves, who has done an outstanding job, and uh, in my remarks earlier I praised his conduct and that of the other statutory officers at the Council. He's also right to say that this report focuses on particular functions of Liverpool City Council and does not comment on the wider delivery of public services in the city by the Council. There is no reason to question the delivery of uh, adult services, children's services, other important functions that people in the city rely on. And he's also right to praise the work of many people in Liverpool, including within the City Council, in their response to the COVID-19 pandemic. I would underline my remarks once again that this is a report about Liverpool City Council. It is not about the neighbouring councils across Merseyside, and neither is it any reflection on the Mayor of the Liverpool City Region, Steve Rotherman. I extend my thanks uh, to him once again for uh, his cooperation and support. It's right that we take this action, and I hope that we can continue to work together on it. None of us do this lightly. Localism is our objective, but localism does require local accountability, transparency and robust scrutiny. And that, I hope, is what we can now achieve. And I'd just like to say before um, I call any of the other members, whilst, I don't believe, um, whilst there are a number of individuals under investigation, I understand that there has been no charges, so there's no subjudice involved, but I would caution members that uh, it is best that they do not compromise any of the ongoing investigations in anything that they